described to me of an incident where he went into the doggy daycare and broke up a fight, and he came out all bloody because of the dog. Like, literally, he was drenched in blood. So now, how did he get into the daycare? Was anybody else there, or what? Do you know? Christina was there. Yeah. Um, I do know that. I know Christina was there, but he's the one that broke up the fight. I see. Because he heard noise, or what did he tell you? I don't he, know what words he heard barking and growling and just obscenity, like, just loud vicious growls and barking basically is what he told me but he went in there and he said that he came out all bloody like I just couldn't believe it and this was in the summer sometime of 2016 I would say so yeah thereabouts yeah I would say spring 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 maybe yeah okay because he, he moved in the summertime so it would probably be spring and this gentleman uh, you knew him how um, he used to come over to the coffee stand all the time to buy drinks for him and Corey and th th was he employed in the area uh, yes, he was an employee of Corey at the aquarium shop. Yes, and uh, we have a prior complaint also um, from a gentleman who owned the aquarium yeah. that they had written in saying that the dogs were left all day. We have that as well. Yes, In the interest of, of uh, any appearance of impropriety, I have a, a background question. Are there any council members in any way friends or personal friends with Ms. Robinson or her husband? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Next, I got. Uh... Our director's been uh, working on this case. Yeah. Right. Since we created a code violation case for us. Good. Good. It should have been done before. They had, I know that the city attorney admitted that they've been a complaint since 2014 that they were still running operations, okay? And as I made my point to city council, it's easy to sting them. Had they gone out and looked, you know, signs should have been posted. It should have been shut down. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know there were several, several sting operations that were set up. And... It's easy. You just follow them home from the, from the, from the brick and mortar. They bring dogs home every night. <laughs> Well, we've done it. <laughs> I can't. I can't anymore because she went and got a restraining order on me. But we've done it. Yeah. And I just—it's just—it's it's sad, man. Our dog is gone, yeah. and we're trying to prevent the death of other dogs and the injury right. of other dogs. Right. If private, if some people want to still board with her as a, as as friends and their buddies like that, they can do that. But she can't be out there to the general public. She's too dangerous. She's a dangerous instrumentality, and it's right. proved. Uh, yeah. The other dog. So the clients picked up their dogs after the towel happened, like to break it up. And then after they left, the Ahadu and Christina came over and basically was yelling at Maria saying it was her fault. Uh -huh. was really how? Fault. how? This is a story about how incompetence, greed, and malfeasant government killed our best friend and allowed a dangerous and illegal dog care operation to continue on unabated a month after our dog was mauled and killed by the owner's personal pack. We are fighting back. Stay tuned at Watchdog for Dog Facebook, watchdogfordog.com as we build that website, and on my personal Facebook and Christopher King blogspot. These people conspired to take the most valuable thing I've ever had in my life, then have the nerve to cover it up and to point fingers at my partner, Elisa, and me. We won't stand for it. Livy won't stand for it. Every day we are sick to our stomachs because of this, and so too will the general populace uh, feel the same way once they hear this story. And this is the most important video I've ever made in my life because it exposes the cover-up before and after the murder of our best friend Libby at the illegal unlicensed dog care center owned by Christina Robinson and Ahadu Amaturata. Based on information and belief, Mountain Lake City Councilor Sean Richards and City Police are complicit. Livy, baby, I am so sorry that I am not the man you believe me to be. Otherwise, I would have researched the situation before I ever left you to die with these irresponsible people while we were on the East Coast during the holidays last month. I can't bring you back, honey, but I can, and I will expose everyone truly responsible for your untimely death at the hands of Miss Robinson's pit bulls back uh, when you were left at their house in Mount Lake Terrace instead of being taken down to the Precious Paws brick-and-mortar storefront in Edmonds. They should have been shut down a long time ago. But animal control officer McKee was too busy playing stupid about how to catch them in this email that we see 
and was too busy writing Edmund's animal control officer, Shoemake, and telling her to ignore me, because, after all, I can't stay out of it, noting that things were going to get ugly and messy. Well, that much is true. That much is true. I investigate murder trials, folks, so I won't shy away from investigating the bogus investigation here either. And neither will my partner, Elisa. She's a trained dog handler. She's very good at what she does. When we watched dogs, we did what we were supposed to do. We protected them. Okay, that didn't happen here. Now, in this so-called investigation after the mauling death of Libby, no one from the city contacted the neighboring business owners or former Precious Paws employees to find out if there were dangerous conditions ongoing that needed emergency abatement. I did that. Okay, and people reached out to me. It was not difficult, but in Mount Lake Terrace, there was obviously some kind of an implicit stand-down order. Why? Let's talk about why. Turns out that Christina Robinson worked at the Crazy Moose Lodge under Marsha Joy, the owner of the house where Libby was mauled and killed, after Marsha sold it to Christina and Ahadu two years ago. Okay? So next, we see that Counselor Sean Richards organized at least one law enforcement event with Crazy Moose Lodge. And that fits perfectly with the neighbors telling us that his Red Onion Burger Shop was storing equipment there at the premises during both the ownership tenures of Miss Joy and Robinson and uh, Amlak Tirada, okay? So there you have a crucial tie-in between all the parties, all right? Not to mention that there was the trunk or treat connection between Christina and Counselor Richards, too. Now, remember at the outset of this video, I had asked Counselor Richards and all the counselors, did you have a personal relationship with Christina Robinson? And they all answered in the negative. You can see Counselor Richards shifting in his seat and carrying on. He looked very nervous, and I wasn't the only one who noticed it, okay? Now, I'm bringing it to light. And I wonder if Counselor Richards will resort to calling me a dickhead, too, as he did to Julius Waldkrich, the man who settled his claims with the city for $70,000 this month after an allegedly wrongful arrest at city council. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in point of fact, uh, Christina has admitted that there were injuries from leaving dogs unattended on prior occasion, and her friend, Petty Angeles, has admitted the same in her kennel, okay? So, Christina should have known better than to leave these dogs unattended and alone, okay? Now, Miss Angeles is an area dog trainer whom I allegedly threatened, and who joined Miss Robinson in claiming that we were not paying customers in order to support her buddy Christina, because Patty is the one who adopted the pit bull Nova to Christina in the first place where Christina, in her uh, writings, indicates to her clients that Nova was the dog in her pack with the most injuries and most likely the dog who killed Livy, all right? These people are both pathetic. Just look at the bank receipts and the PayPal receipts. We were clearly paying clients. And Patty, uh, not rather Patty, but uh, Christina acknowledged it in her own text message. You know, it's crazy. These people are crazy. They will stop at no end because they've been protected. I am going to peel away that layer that... that, that that the veil of protection that they have. And there's enough dog owners and animal lovers out there who can see the truth right now and come to our assistance and back up on this case because it's heinous, all right? Now, furthermore, the neighbors had a, a temporary restraining order against Christina and Ahadu for unlawful video on private premises and vitriolic comments and an improper use of social media that the court ruled. And at that time, Christina, who's now crying victim, stated publicly, she was gonna put some fear in those motherfuckers. That's her words, not me, okay? Yeah. Now, Christina, by the way, is a convicted felon for a crime of moral turpitude involving dishonesty, i.e. a plea bargain down from uh, forgery to attempted forgery, okay? She had not one, not two, but three bail revocations during that case, and she never even did her community service. And that fits because guess what? She never gave us a card or flowers or any formal apology or sympathy note after she you know, Livy was killed in her house. It's crazy. These are heartless people out to do whatever they can for themselves. And it's pathetic. It's disgusting. Remember now, Christina lied to city council in her zoning request and said the dogs were supervised 24-7 and never left unattended. Look at it. It's right there in front of you. Okay? When I showed that to Patty, she tried to pretend as if she didn't know what it was. Okay? Because they're buddy-buddy. And that's a fact. Now, and uh, as far as the specious TRO that she took on on me that resulted in a hearing on the 7th of February, 2014, in Snohomish County South Division. I have issued motions, and I'm going to be issuing a subpoena to bring Patty Angeles in herself, because she's the one I allegedly threatened, but she didn't take out an order of protection against me, okay? So it's all going to come out, all right? I am afraid of no man, nor woman, nor am I violent in any way, all right? Never have been, never will be, unless somebody comes in my house, but that's not what we're dealing with now, okay? So, 
Those of you familiar with the Hanover, Massachusetts mauling and the immediate abatement following investigation or pending investigation of that case and criminal proceedings may wonder why Ms. Robinson is getting so much slack. We obviously believe that Counselor Sean Richards and certain police officers may be involved because the police were called out there to the neighbor's house to review the video cameras that were still monitoring the neighbors illegally. And they refused to take the cameras down. They said they didn't understand. They needed further clarification. Okay? Yeah, sure. And by the way, we have trained Livy at the Seattle Academy of Canine Behavior, I think it's called. Um, and they pronounced her a kind and gentle soul. Now, Christina Robinson claims to have worked there as well. So let's see if our attorney can get a look at her personnel file. That might be interesting. Meanwhile, justice for Livy hangs in the balance. We aim to snatch it for her. Because it's all we have left. Eternal vigilance is indeed the price of liberty.